I've always thought that working on a movie was like entering into this strange little bubble world, you know? It only lasts the briefest of moments. If you're lucky, you get to meet people who inspire you, who push you to be better than you already are. Maybe you even make a friend who actually stays your friend once said bubble has popped. But if you're really lucky, inside of one of those alternate states of being, you might just get the chance to meet Brittany Snow. <laughs> I had my moment of such luck when I was cast alongside Britney in the epic 2008 slasher film I know you have all seen and loved called Prom Night. Thank you. It was our first week of shooting. I was sitting outside my trailer in the sweltering downtown Los Angeles heat when the lead of the movie came over with a chair and said, hey, how are you? But this wasn't just small talk. See, Britney has this innate ability to see beyond the surface of people. She wants to get in there, to truly understand what makes someone who they are. It's one of the qualities that makes her such a compelling actor. And the me that she saw, the real me, past the expertly crafted facade of cool, was the me that was barely hanging on. So there we were in our little plastic chairs, wearing our super stylish and oh so comfortable mid 2000s style prom dresses, when for the first time in my life, I realized there was someone who could see me for who I was and who wasn't afraid to step up. She was there, she was ready to reach me. She was ready to open herself up so that I could feel safe enough to do the same. And without that moment of empathy, and that strength that she gave me to share the truth of my decade-long sickness, I am honestly not sure that I would still be here today. <laughs> and that is exactly what Brittany has done for countless others around the world. Today, Brittany Snow is receiving the Creative Coalition's Humanitarian Award for her work with September Letters. This is a digital platform that she created that provides a space for people to share their personal stories and connect with others through a unique letter writing experience. It is designed to start real conversations around mental health and around mental illness. It is designed to inspire or to find, maybe for the first time in someone's life, that there is someone out there who gets it who's been there, or who is simply willing to listen. So in the years since prom night swept the Oscars, <laughs> yeah, Britney Snow has gone on to star and hit television shows as well as major franchise movies, but it is her generosity, her fearlessness in using her own voice to affect positive social change that I have most enjoyed watching. So today it is my great honor to present the Creative Coalition's Humanitarian Award to my very dear friend, the beautiful Brittany Snow. Um, I brought my sunglasses up here because I don't know if I'm going to cry or not. Um, so if I do, those are going on. Um, this is, uh, this is really incredible, and thank you to the Creative Coalition for all of this, um, because I've, I feel so um, surrounded by really what matters right now, specifically. I mean, empathy, being a human, acknowledging each other right now, this is what we need. You know, we just need to keep doing this. So my speech is not great, and I'm just gonna like, whoever's doing the teleprompter, let's just like work together here. Um, because we're gonna we're gonna do this together. Um, so I want to say thanks to Jess because it's very humbling to receive an award from someone that I look so much up to, and I can't believe you just said so honestly about what you were struggling with and what I was struggling with at the exact same time, and that's what united us as best friends. 
I feel incredibly lucky to, to be here with everybody today. In LA, we have so many award shows that give incredible achievements, but this is the one company that I'm most proud to be in because every one here is doing something necessary and positive, and we truly now know why we have this platform to even begin with. I mean, if we can't do something about this voice that we're given, then what are we really even doing here? You know, just being on TV, that's great, but come on, let's do something else. Um, we also get to be around each other, and given the state of the world, I feel so glad to be among so many people who put empathy and kindness in each, other, each other's well-being first. So when I was around 15 years old, I was obsessed with fitness magazines. I used to collect them and scour them, looking for answers on why I was so unhappy. If only this new workout plan or diet or girl in a bikini could tell me that her being thin or this diet would give me happiness and make me feel like I was going to fit in, then that's what I wanted to do. And that's how I equated love. One day I read an article in a fitness magazine that changed everything. She wrote an article talking about her depression, her thoughts on herself and on food. And she described how sad she was with her body and more importantly, how she really felt about herself. I remember feeling as if I felt found some sort of holy grail because I was doing the exact same things with food and with my body and how I was thinking and feeling. I didn't know this woman. I knew I was never going to meet her, but I knew whatever I was doing had a name and I was not alone. I ripped that article out of my back. Of, of the magazine and I carried it around in my back pocket. It reminded me that I wasn't alone. When my head told me I was crazy, the article in, the back, in my back pocket told me that I was one of many and even though I didn't know this woman, I knew she had recovered. Years later, after some significant recovery, I wrote an article for a popular magazine and I talked about how much that article had helped me. It was scary and I was met with a lot of judgment and confusion. Later, after the article came out, I went to a coffee shop and there was a girl standing in front of me around my age and she turned around, tears in her eyes, and pulled out my article from the magazine out of her back pocket. She told me she was keeping it to remind her she wasn't alone. Obviously, we both cried. The coffee bean employee thought we were insane. That's fine, we both got our blendeds. And I realized my own ego of being fearful. What truly mattered was I had helped somebody just as the woman who'd wrote the article when I was 15 had helped me. This is how September Letters began. I wanted to connect our stories. I wanted to do something with the idea of letter writing and how our stories are the very thing that unite us. Maybe if we can read how alike we are, we can stop fighting our differences. We launched last September after a year of preparation and weirdly enough, we launched in a pandemic which was not planned, but it seemed like we needed honesty and self-reflection more than ever. We now have hundreds and hundreds of letters from across the world on our site in whatever category they need to discuss, mental health, physical health, love, LGBTQ+, equality, grief, and whatever they are dealing with. They come to our site to write, read, and gain a community of friends. I couldn't have done this without my fearless partner, Jasper Guest, and our team of badass and all women. Sorry. No, no, no. Okay, sorry. Uh, I know, it's like, it's hot, and like there's like salmon, we gotta go. Um, <laughs> September Letters has made me feel like we all have a story, no better or worse, and listening, sharing, reading, and connecting, we can all feel like we're gonna get through this together, whatever that may be. Thank you so much, the Creative Coalition. I have followed you guys for so long. I'm so honored to be among everybody here. I've cried, I've laughed, the whole thing. And if we can all continue to connect with each other, amplify the message of mental health, and make us realize we all may just need each other's letter in our own back pocket. Thank you. Yeah.